welcome to the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. It's Tough Nut Thursday, which means we're going to be bringing you all the brains and the brawn to get you through this circuit breaker season. Speaking of, did you know, fun fact, um, that the activewear brand Nimble mm -hmm. released uh, something called the circuit breaker bra? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you know, because they're talking about like circuits that you train um, and it's not in relation to our circuit breaker, but I just thought it was such a timely thing. Mm. Someone's clearly very, very tickled by the simple things in life. Anyway, uh, we hope that your morning has been going fine, dandy, and really well so far. Of course, if you were up working out with our seniors, first light, you would have been getting a good stretch out with them. That's right. Or if you boxed it out with the lads from Uppercut, Safiel was in the house earlier on. Mm -hmm, whatever it is, we are so glad that you're hanging out with us now for the next hour. And don't forget that later on, you can lean it out with House Athletics at 3 p.m. and get your dinner inspiration at 4 p.m. with Ben Logan on What You're Cooking. But before that, let's take a quick look at the numbers through from yesterday. 690 new cases, 11 of them community cases with six Singaporeans and PRs, five of them work pass holders, and none of them visit pass holders, which is great. Yeah, it's always nice to see a zero in there. We've got 19 work permit holders uh, outside the dorms and 660 in the dorms, which brings us to 63% being linked to known clusters. Now, as we were making our way into studio today, we we're noticing that the road's still very quiet, which is great to see. It means mm -hmm. a lot of you are at home. It also makes for Bro a nice drive. Yeah, it's, it's also a nice drive. Um, and we're one of the very few lucky ones that actually get to be out and about because we're coming into work. Yep. However, if you are driving out and about, this is not the time for you to be driving like a douche. Like there's so many people who are like speeding on the highways going out and I actually saw the police on the highways, standing by to catch people. So like, don't take the risk and don't it, risk injuring other yeah. people, COVID it, or not. Just, yeah, just because there's be no nice. traffic doesn't mean you own the road. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Anyway, <sighs> with all that, I think that was just yeah, a little bit we, of a we just rant to get that on our chest. <laughs> Um, onto happy and brighter things like free subway meals. Yeah, so each day we've got the easiest giveaway in town. Mm -hmm. And all you need to do is to go onto our Facebook page at Get Active TV, mm -hmm. like it and follow it, and then you need to share the morning show. Yes. Um, what? It's simple, you just press that share button, post it to your page and say, hey everybody, check out the morning show, it's awesome. And we just want you to tell us one thing, drop us a comment and tell us what's the one thing you've learned about yourself being on the circuit breaker. What about you? Well, I think I've learned how to communicate with people better. Prior to this, you know, I kind of took for granted that everyone's doing okay and then we'll just, you know, meet up for coffee as and when. But now I find myself checking in with people a little bit more and we're, we're staying in touch and communicating better. Mm -hmm. For me, I think I've really learned how much I truly enjoy cookies, especially because I can't get them. So okay, I'm having to, to make, make them myself. Here. Deeper, deeper meaningful. meaningful. Deeper meaningful. Well, talking about deeper meaningful, stretching and your mobility work. Speaking of which, I better uh, start warming up because I'm going to be stretching it out and getting all mobile or as Barbara likes to say, I'm going to get physical, physical with Shrek from Ritual <laughs> right after the break. Don't go anywhere.
for joining me here on The Morning Show. Now, yesterday, Barbara swapped me out for someone who was taller and a bit more tan. Well, Barbara, I see your tan human and I raise you 10... 10 cm and about 15 kilos in muscle mass. Uh, joining me today in this lovely squat position to get us started off on our mobility session is Shrek from Ritual. Shrek, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, now today we're going to be discussing a little bit about mobility. And like yeah. I said, I, I feel like I really need to warm up before we get into this session. But let's talk about mobility. What's the difference between mobility and just stretching? Okay, so it's usually this two terms. Uh, people will either say flexibility, mm -hmm. yeah, that's where you stretch, okay, and then mobility, this is, uh, this is something with regards to your joint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and explain this as layman as possible because I don't want to go a bit too technical and that people at home don't Just really confused, understand. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you talk about stretching, you talk about uh, flexibility, that's lengthening of the muscle. Okay, okay when so you talk like about a stretch. Ah, yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, that's basically Ooh. stretching, right. okay. trying to get the hamstring uh, lengthened. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we talk about mobility, what we are trying to do here is to improve the movement of your joint. Because let, let's say, good example, most people, if you ask them to raise their hands up over their head, some of them will be like that, in a weird position. It's just because they don't have that range of mobility on their shoulders. It's, yeah. it's quite cute. Everyone in the studio yeah. is now trying to raise their hands yeah. above their okay. head. So, so if you, you can exactly make a straight line yeah. without arcing your lower back too much. Okay. Without, uh, I'm feeling really conscious about how much I'm arching my back now. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we mean by mobility. Your, the ability for your, re, your, your joints to be able to move through that range of motion. Right. Yeah? Okay. okay. So, so how do we work? With that, so here's the thing about myself. Uh, probably known to be like, I can't sit still, okay? <laughs> and then at the same time, if you ask me to do things like stretching just by itself, I can't do that as well because I get bored too easily. Mm -hmm. So which is why I come up with this, I mean, you've seen a lot, but I come up with what I call mobility through movements. Okay. Yeah, so for what I'm going to be showing you today is just basic movements that, so, I mean, some of you guys who follow me on my Instagram post, sometimes I will do things like movement pattern of a animal. Yes. Yeah, so that is actually me working on my mobility at the same time. Nice. And best part of it is it's just so fun. And <laughs> even kids, sometimes fun. I'm at, uh, sometimes the, the best part about like me doing this in the park, mm. kids will actually just like, hey, let's just follow this uncle. But like kids are so good, right? Like I see. And they actually like, do it way better than most of us. And they're just like, yeah, sure, I can yep. do it. I, I can contort my body in really there weird ways. <laughs> so I'm like, Child, what are you doing? Okay. okay, so what are we gonna do? Okay, so for before we start doing any form of movements, usually what I like to do is I like to get myself warm up. Okay, okay so warm up the same thing through movements. Okay. okay, so very simple. I'm gonna get you, you, you're gonna try and follow me? I will try and follow you. Okay, cool. Okay, we're gonna get into this position. What uh, it's just basically on our force, yeah? Okay. okay, you can put your knees on the ground. Mm -hmm. All right, so down here, what we are trying to do is we're just gonna try and loosen up uh, mainly the spine. Okay. okay, so we're going to start off by rounding your back this way. So it's like a cat-cow thing. Yes, that's right. And then, lower it down. Okay, one more time. Up first. And then down. This is already... Okay, hard. next, we're going to go sideways. Okay. So you go this way. Oh, I haven't done that before. Yep. And then, opposite side. Okay, one more time. Right. That's a really one nice stretch the left. the obliques. Okay, now we're going to combine all that. Okay, so we go up, up to the side, side, down, side. I feel like up. I probably don't look as graceful as you doing this. It's okay. <laughs> okay, now we go I'm opposite moving. direction. Okay. I feel like I'm stirring a pot with my back yeah oh. that's how you're supposed to feel actually there you go okay? okay so this is mainly on the spine okay okay next up uh is gonna be a little bit on the shoulders and the hips mm -hmm. ankle as well okay so i'm gonna get you same thing this time on, on the four position okay and you're gonna get your knees off the floor okay okay so from here you're gonna push yourself back <laughs> oops 
Let's hope we don't push the <laughs> yeah. carpet too much. Let's not ruin the set while <laughs> we're doing this. Okay. Okay, so from here, yep. okay, you're going to push your body forward. Okay. Ooh, too close, too close, too close. Yep. yep. Maintain our distance. Yeah. Okay, and then drop. Okay, oh, now you're going to drop. My spine just cracked. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're going to push your butt back again. Up. I feel like this is probably not a very flattering angle for my stomach, but hey. Okay, one it's last real. time. And up. This is like a workout in itself. There you go. Okay, so oh. now we are quite warm up. Okay. So we are ready to <laughs> do all... Warm up. Yep. Okay. So, there's these two movements I always like to show uh, to my trainees, my client, whenever we do some form of training outside. It's also a good way to warm up. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one, I call it the bear. Okay, and then the second one, I call it the froggers. Okay. Okay, so, and this movement is just the basic before you can actually branch out to doing weird stuff. Okay. Or cool so, stuff. So let's stick with the basics let's for stick today. The basics okay, first. let's, let's okay. go through these two so, moves. So, the first one is called the bear, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna get into what we call the A-frame position. Okay, you can start off being in the tabletop position. Mm -hmm. From here, you're going to just push your butt as high as you can. Okay. Okay. All right, I and should probably do this. All right, yep. let's go. Okay, and then you're going to coordinate the movement. Okay, so right hand forward, uh -huh. left hand forward. Okay, so a left leg forward, sorry. Okay. okay, this way. Okay. Okay, and then. All right. Oh, goodness me. And do we go backwards as well? And then, yeah, from there. we just run out of studio space? Yeah, backwards. Wow, my hamstrings. And, all right, relax. As you can see, at this point of time, aside from just the movement itself, you're stretching. Yep. You're okay, getting all those hamstrings. joints to be in those weird, weird positions. Mm -hmm. Positions that you don't normally, like purposely, like there's, there's no reason for you to be in that position, right? When you do your, when you actually do your everyday uh, stuff, you don't normally get into that position, which is why I think this is very important before we start doing things like our exercises. Especially those guys who like, enjoy doing things like high impact exercises, uh, doing things like HIIT and stuff like that. Be yeah, uh -huh. before you go into all those movements, that's why I say you have to loosen out yourself first. This is also one way we can actually keep our joint lubricated at the same time. Okay, just yep. quickly before we go, our final move, what are we going to be doing? Okay, so it's the frogus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the frogus. We look something like this. Yep, you're gonna start exactly in that position. Okay, great. Okay, you're gonna put your hands on the floor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, from here, you're gonna lean forward, just at a point where you feel like you're toppling forward. The legs follow through. Okay. Okay. This feels like something my daughter would do. Yep. There you go. Forward. And it's like a very gentle, controlled movement, correct. but like you can really feel your body having to work together in terms of that lean position and yep. trying to coordinate everything. Yeah. And the thing is about these movements, this is, like I said, this is basics, which can actually lead to even more cool movements if you are, if, if I can just show off a bit. Yeah? Okay, okay, so okay. You can to wrap this up, <laughs> come on, yeah, show You can me probably you think, do things like as controlled as possible and and this time now, I'm going to just show you a little bit advanced in terms of the movement where you're going to raise your legs. Mm -hmm. Control. Same thing. Yes, okay, now you're showing off. And on that note, <laughs> uh, Shrek from Ritual, thank you so much for joining us. You're People welcome. can go check out your Instagram if they want to find out more workout inspiration, I am sure. You are also an Under Armour ambassador. That's right. And I hear we've got a very special deal coming your way next Thursday, nice. which includes a very hefty discount. So mm -hmm. you do want to make sure that you are staying tuned with us here on Get Active TV because we've got all of that coming your way. Shrek, thank you so much. You're I'm welcome. gonna go and attempt to fly my legs up in the air in a few short moments, but we are going to head on off for a short break. Remember, keep those comments coming. Tell us what you've learned about yourself, be it being able to fly your legs up in the air or whatever, and you might just score yourself a Subway meal. Do stick around with us here on The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara.
welcome back to the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. We love hearing from you guys. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you are dropping us a comment. Say hello. More importantly, take part in our competition online. It's very simple. What have you learned about yourself? Now, if you didn't already know, today is National Bubble Tea Day, guys. But we've already shown you a bubble tea video. That's right. So <laughs> because bubble tea is sold out everywhere, tapioca flour is impossible to find, even if you wanted to try and make it by yourself. So I decided to mix it up a little bit with Sienna and make you something different for a hot summer's day. A boost juice. Because we can't go out and get her favorite boost juice, we decided to make one at home. What ingredients do we need, Sienna? Strawberry and milk and apple juice. That's right. And then we also need some ice. That's right, to blend it all together. So let's get cracking. Sienna's going to start by chopping the strawberries. Sienna, can you help me cut some strawberries? Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Can we do it together? We've got to chop off the head first. Okay, so turn the knife down. Take it away. And what's the duration? Ooh, juicy strawberry. Very nice. And then let's take it off. Very good. Can do it on the oven. It is a little bit juicy. No, I can do it. Good, Sienna? Two minutes. Time. I will do like this. See you later. Are we coming Bye. back on three? <laughs> How cute is that? So Sienna now has this cute little like do like this series and it all started off with uh, and she was mimicking Kelly and it was like a workout video. She's like, hello everybody. Welcome to do like this. 
Um, so as you can tell, Kelly is no longer with me at the moment. Um, Tough Nut Thursdays is not just about the physical health and strength, but also the mental health as well, which is why I'm so happy to welcome on set uh, clinical psychotherapist <laughs> Ting Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting. You're welcome. She's also my best friend, so this is basically an excuse for me to be able to see my best friend. So to hang out, yes. I wanted to have a little bit of a chat <laughs> with you. Um, so you were working in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. um, you've been there for a really long time now, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. How was it being in Buffalo um, while the pandemic started? Mm -hmm. So sometime in early March, things started to get really bad in New York State and um, the lockdown actually started in New York State and then across America, even before Singapore started going into um, what we call the circuit breaker now. So my parents got really anxious um, because the media coverage for America is not always the most positive and truly they are struggling to get resources. So it was scary, but very quickly, you know, um, as a healthcare provider, I didn't have to stop doing my work, but I, I complied with a lot of regulations. And since I'm not frontline staff, um, I just decided to do telehealth. So using phones and videos. That, that's right. So you started <coughs> working from home, um, doing all the teleconference sessions, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you flew back mainly because of your parents. So how is that like? Because I think the, the culture is very different like in mm -hmm. the US versus over here, the Western and Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. um, so you basically came back because mom and dad were worried and they want you home. Yes. And my mom said that if she was in that situation, she would want me home as well. But how is that having to come back just because mom and dad want you back? So it was a very interesting sacrifice. Um, I had to sort out logistics because I have a home there, I have a car, I have, I have a whole life there, I have a full-time <laughs> full position there, I have my own private practice there, but I was able to sort out a lot of those logistics um, knowing full well that I would have to come back to a two-week hotel quarantine and still work, and still work in the New York time zone. Yeah, so, so that was the next thing I wanted <laughs> to talk about. So coming back, you've managed to retain all your clients. Um, but of course, you had to serve two weeks of quarantine in a hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then, you've obviously purely been at home, uh, not really going out. Um, but you're also having to work on the New York time zone, which means you're waking up at five, six o'clock in the evening yes. when your parents are starting to have dinner. And then you're going to bed pretty much now. So we've yeah. kept you up <laughs> late. <laughs> Um, how is it, how mentally for you and physically as well, having to deal with that kind of, like, is your mm -hmm. body fighting the time zone? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so I actually just got done with my final session at 7 this morning, and then I got showered, got dressed, and came here. Um, so what I've been doing is blocking out light as soon as the sun rises in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So making sure that my body doesn't start waking up and going like, oh, it's time for breakfast. Oh, it's time for a new day because it's not a new day. Little disclaimer, <laughs> as soon as she came into the studio <laughs> earlier on, she was like, I'm hungry. It's daytime. I need food. All the snacks, all the twisties. Um, but it's, it's been extremely challenging. So the weather changes um, just brought about this terrible, terrible bout of sinuses. Mm. And then I thought I got coronavirus, but I didn't. It was just a really bad sinuses. Um, so thank God for antihistamines. Mm -hmm. But also I've started noticing things that my body is experiencing with the lack of sunlight. So for example, just getting one to two hours a day of light is a complete lack of vitamin D. Yeah. So hair fall, brittle nails, oh no. perpetually feeling tired, even though I'm up with my coffee. Yeah because it's nighttime outside. So my body's circadian rhythm is extremely confused. Mm -hmm. um, I'm extremely confused. Sorry, break down? <sighs> Just break down that word for me. Circadian rhythm? Rhythm, yes. What's that? So every, every human has a natural state of homeostasis, which is oh, base. Let's, let's explain one big word <laughs> with another big word. So baseline health, okay. that's what we call it. So our body heals itself. Our brain heals itself. Mm -hmm. Our heart heals itself. So. The circadian rhythm is what picks up on sunlight and sunset. So some of us need melatonin because we don't have, we're not producing enough natural melatonin. Right. So we're not picking up when it's getting dark and then we cannot sleep at night. But then we feel sleepy after that oh, because you're just okay. drained. 
So, so what are you doing? Okay, so you're blocking out the sunlight. Um, what else are you trying doing? You know, in the hours that you are mm -hmm. awake and are asleep to help your body um, physically and mentally cope mm -hmm. with this big, big change. Mm -hmm. So really trying to eat well, that has been very important. Um, but How? Come, How can you come back to Singapore and not just want to indulge in like Roja exactly. and your knee? Exactly. So uh, that part hasn't really gone very well. <laughs> but I engage in truly a lot of mindfulness practices and research just shows that when your mental health is doing better, your mm -hmm. physical health will pick up. But also when you take care of your physical health, then your mental health gets better. So yoga every day, mm -hmm. um, twice a week, I try and do home workouts. I don't like cardio, but I'll try and do like some toning stuff yeah. just to keep energy levels high. Even release, having to stay up all night. Release some good endorphins. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not even overdosing on the coffee because too much caffeine is not good for your heart. Okay. But, so so mm -hmm. speaking of mental health, obviously it's, it's a big push for you, but it's also a big push for a lot of people out there who are... Um, whether you're living at home with your parents and not used to having family members in such a large dosage, um, or if you're living alone and, and you're not used to being on your own for such extended periods of time. I mean, you can go out and get your groceries, you can go out for a jog, but you're still lacking that human um, connection, which can take its toll mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had we had some guests in to talk about mindfulness, but uh, do you have any recommendations on what are the signs that people should look out for that maybe it is a good time to like reach out for help? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm not talking like serious help, but just like someone to talk to and what are the platforms that people can reach out to? Mm -hmm. So some signs that are valid and appropriate at a time like that are increased feelings of anxiousness. So anxiety looks like insomnia. Anxiety looks like lack of motivation. And sometimes you might even be feeling depressed because we're all truly helpless and hopeless right now. We're not sure when this will end. Um, any single rise in the number shocks us. Mm. But also just understanding on your own what's an appropriate reaction and what is maybe this is disproportionate. Because yeah, like how, how do I know if I'm genuinely anxious or mm -hmm. how do I know if I'm completely taking it out of context and I'm just, you know, being a bit extreme? Like mm -hmm. how do I know if I'm overreacting about something? Yeah, so measuring responses to how you might have responded before COVID-19. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of making like a little science experiment on myself, just trying to recognize, okay, how would I have, how would I have responded to this prior to COVID-19 and Circuit Breaker, and how am I responding to it now? Precisely, yes. Oh, okay. But some other solutions that are very important, um, maintaining social engagement, house party, Zoom, Skype dates, FaceTime dates, WhatsApp dates. Social appropriation is extremely important at a time like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you need a break from the family members that you're staying with. Try and find some alone time, go for a jog, go for a walk go to your own bedroom, get some privacy. If you can't do that, find some way at least, close your eyes, headphones on. In the toilet also works. I mean, you're alone in there, no one's gonna disturb you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and are there, um, obviously people can reach out to you, you're in Singapore, you're working on the US time zone, but of course there is some crossover from mm -hmm. your bedtime and your sleep time. So you have yes. your own website, it's called www, I think we flashed it on the screen, dot healing dash wholeness dash, dash recovery dot com yeah um, so people can reach mm -hmm. out to you from there and have a consultation session yes first um, and and then from there you guys can talk about stuff mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there are also a lot of platforms many yeah mm -hmm. so just break it down for me before we before we wrap up our little chat um, so you're a clinical psychotherapist yes right so what <laughs> <laughs> what exactly does that encompass? Mm -hmm. So psychotherapy encompasses um, different variations of interventions. So our first, our first go-to is not medications. That's what you would see a psychiatrist for. Mm -hmm. So psychotherapists work very much like psychologists, um, but psychologists might maybe do a little bit more research, a little bit more teaching. Psychotherapists it's, it encompasses a very personal relationship. Mm -hmm. It starts like how Barbara and I started as friends. Yes. 
and then we get deep. Yes. We get deep and we get personal, <laughs> we get we meaningful, <laughs> hot, hot talk. We go back so we can go forward, yeah. and sometimes we're like, okay, we can't go back anymore, and we can't rush forward too much. We just got to stay here now, and what are we going to do now? Awesome. So that, that feels like a very nice, healthy, balanced kind of yes. uh, help for people to go to. All right, well, we're going to mm -hmm. wrap this one up. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was some really good perspective. Um, we're going to let you go back to bed <laughs> and, and get your good night's sleep in. And we're going to take a short break. But when we come back, Kelly catches up with Muay Thai fighter Kai Chen. Don't go anywhere. Back to the morning show. Thanks for hanging out with us on Tough Nut Thursday. Barbara and I are playing tag today, sort of like swapping in and out with our guests to make sure that you've got a whole roster of people who are keeping you engaged by stretching you out, by helping you stay mobile, by talking about mental health and resilience. And now I think it's time for some serious muscle. Joining us today, Muay Thai fighter Kai from Team Singapore. How are you doing? How are you feeling amongst this whole circuit breaker? Um, I'm feeling Okay, yeah. You're feeling okay? Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, well, thanks okay. for coming to join us. I mean, let's talk a little bit about your journey in Muay Thai. When did you first start fighting? Um, I started Muay Thai in about 2006. Okay. Uh, I started my first fight when I was 17 years old. Right. So, yeah. Perspective, how old are you now? 29. 29, that's uh. such a spring chicken. Okay, <laughs> so, so why did you start Muay Thai? Like, what was, what was the obsession with it? Because I don't think 2006, it wasn't that big yet, right? Yeah. So actually, um, growing up, I used to be a big fan of martial arts movies and action movies. Mm -hmm. So my dad himself was an avid practitioner of martial arts. Oh, which martial arts um, did he do? Various um, Chinese martial arts like Chang Quan, Hong Quan, Ba Kwa Quan, and so on. And then he always encouraged me to take up martial arts. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember there was a particular incident that I was playing soccer. And then uh, I stood up for a kid that was being bullied. But I got beaten up. Oh, no. <laughs> So, <laughs> Backfired. So um, I still remember how it feels like to not be able to properly defend yourself mm -hmm. and protect yourself. So uh, my dad also used to always encourage me to take up martial arts because it helps to build confidence. Mm -hmm. And then um, you would actually learn how to defend yourself in times like need and like what happened to me as well. You so know what? I can completely agree <laughs> and can relate because when we were in the UK when we were younger, uh, Barbara and I both got bullied because of racism, right? Because we were in a small town in the UK and we were half Chinese and they're like, who are you? What are you even? Uh, so I started martial arts out of the same sort of 
reason as well to, d to be able to defend myself um, and obviously in the UK it gets rough right like it's it's not like Singapore where you have like little fights here and there yeah. in in the UK it's like I got roughed up pretty bad um, so I did I did Kyokushin and, oh, Kyokushin. and so it, it was a great step and it was something that I did with my dad Barbara dabbled in it for a while before she was just like nah that's not my thing um, but then now she's she's all into boxing so that impetus to join to defend yourself I think it's a very noble Thing to do and that discipline aspect is something yeah. that carries on through to the rest of your yes, life. Yes, exactly. Right? So, um, after, and then when I was after I was bullied, I, I went to search on what sort of martial arts I would take up. And I remember I came across a movie called Ombak. Oh, I remember so, that. Yeah, like, like what you said um, back then, um, um, 2006, there wasn't much martial arts schools in Singapore. So, when I found out that it was a um, Muay Thai uh, through the movie, I actually um, went to Google and searched up uh, mm -hmm. a list of schools to join. Yep. So, I, I started um, joining uh, a Muay Thai gym mm -hmm. and then um, I haven't looked back since. It's been about 14 years since I started uh, martial arts uh, Muay Thai. A, that's yeah. a really nice story. I mean, like it's hard as well to keep up with the training because it's very intensive. Very. You do need to be at optimal fitness yes. all the time. So how do you manage to do that? So um, initially when I started, I really didn't want to go competitive. It was more like a hobby. Mm -hmm. But then I fell in love with the sport, with the culture. So uh, I love fitness as well from a young age. So um, I actually try to go for trainings as f almost every day when I was a teenager, a young kid. So I actually got fitter, stronger, better. Uh, Keeps you out skills. of trouble as yeah, well, right? as, as, especially exactly. when you're a teenager. Yeah, I was pretty uh, um, truant when I was a, a kid. So, I think yeah. we've all been there. We've all been there. So then w talk about that step towards joining Team Singapore then. Okay, and then um, I think um, back then, right, I, I feel that um, there were not many events um, locally for mm -hmm. local fighters to compete. So there would only be maybe two to four events a year. So uh, it was very hard for me to gain experience. But then when I started fighting in the local circuit, um, I started fighting local opponents and then uh, international opponents. And then um, somehow I got selected to, to um, get into Team Singapore. And then um, so from there on, I was actually um, training very hard for, for my competitions overseas and all. Yep. So no overseas competitions at the moment, but of your memory of what it was like, what, what's it like sort of like fighting in Thailand, for example? Fighting in Thailand is actually very different compared to fighting in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Because um, in Singapore, like I mentioned, uh, there's a lack of events. So there's um, no platform for local or aspiring fighters to actually um, gain more exposure and experience. But in Thailand, they have fights daily. Um, all over Thailand, different provinces, um, small to major stadiums. And then for the Thais, it's actually a way of life. It's a culture there. So many of the top fighters that we know today, they come from actually very um, poor backgrounds and all. So what the parents would do is they would send them to um, fight, fight camps and then hopeful that, be hopeful that the boss would take them in. In return, they would provide them accommodation, food, training, and then um, a, a platform for the kids to fight. It's so, a better life, right? Yeah, and, then, and when they grow, grow, as they grow up and they get more famous and um, ranked in the major stadiums, they'll, get, they'll, get, they'll be paid more money as well. So, um, yeah, it's for them, it's actually a way of providing their families a better life if they yeah, do not have a chance for education. So it's very, very different. It's then. very different. As, as someone in Singapore, I mean, obviously, we're, we're very blessed yeah, with very good, <laughs> safe surroundings and everyone pretty much has a very equal chance of upbringing and exposure to things. So do you think there's a difference then in the hunger of athletes who have to do it because if they don't, they have no rice to eat versus our local athletes who have a lot of things provided and have the infrastructure to support them to try and get better? Definitely, I feel um, because of the drive, um, because um, driven by poverty, so they are very, very um, determined. They train hard, you know, they go all out to to reach their goals. So when we meet them, um, particularly like uh, opponents from Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, um, they are very um, motivated, you know. Uh, and then, um, I mean, it pays off because you can see that um, they have a different drive compared to, to local fighters because like, like what you said, we, we are actually pretty uh, pam pam we're, we're blessed. Yeah, blessed. We're, we're very, yeah. very blessed. So just to wrap us up then, the impact of COVID has obviously affected all sports events, not just here in Singapore, but around the world. How are you staying in fighting shape at home? Okay, so actually I have a couple of games in the pipelines for me this year. Um, actually, it's the 2020 um, 
if my world championships in Dubai mm -hmm. around happening around end of May and then um, Asian Beach Games around the end of this November a couple of other smaller regional games um, maybe in Korea so um, I started training very hard actually since January and then um, before COVID happened um, I was actually uh, in pretty good shape and then uh, but when COVID happened I, I couldn't I couldn't go for trainings and all because and it's um, different right yeah, you've got no different. one to spar against you Nobody can only spar. do so much to condition yourself yeah. right well we're, we're running short of time uh, but we wish you all the very best of luck for all your competitions fingers crossed that yeah. this whole situation eases up so that you can get out there and keep competing because yeah. that is obviously the drive for an athlete I can yeah, only to imagine hope to fly the colors of a Singapore high Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's very, very noble, and I'm sure you'll continue to do Singapore proud. Kai, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so us. much for Thank you for here. sharing. Yeah. I, th I think it's awesome to have athletes coming on our show to share how they're dealing with COVID as well, and trying to maintain some semblance of fighting fitness to ensure that they can continue to fly our Singapore flags. We're going to go off for a short break, but remember, if you haven't already done so, comment on our Facebook feed and let us know what you've learned about yourself uh, during this circuit breaker period and you might be walking away with a free subway meal we're gonna go for a short break but when we return Barbara is back with me and we'll bring you lots more here on the morning show don't go away this tough nut Thursday is treating you well so far. We've been giving away tons of stuff this week, food vouchers, sports apparel, and today is no different. We've got a free meal from Subway to give to you. All you need to do is like uh, our Facebook page, Get Active TV, share it on your page, and tell us what is the one thing that you've learned about yourself during this circuit breaker period? Well, I have learned how to nail the Superman. And if you'd like to nail it down as well, and I don't mean the dance, um, you, then watch wow. this because Cheryl Lowe breaks it down for us this morning. Hello and welcome to Break It Down, where we are giving you the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs, the crunches, the holds, the everything you need to know about basic movements that you can do from the comfort of your own home. And joining us this entire week is Cheryl Lowe. Cheryl, uh, we've been breaking down a few different movements so far over the course of the week. What are we doing today? Uh, we're going to be doing Superman. So Superman hold and Rocket Man hold, two different types of back uh, body weight back exercise. Like so it. yeah, we uh, again we'll be lying down on the floor, 
Um, you I get like it relax. already. Yeah, you get okay. to relax for a bit first. Okay. Yeah, so we will start with this uh, common one, which is Superman. Uh, Superman hold. We are working on the mostly, personally, I like to work on upper back. Okay. Upper back muscles instead of the lower back. So common mistakes, I'm going to touch on the common mistakes first. Uh, most people lift up the body too high up. Yeah, you don't want to work on the lower back too much. You're going to feel a, even more strain mm -hmm. on the lower back. Okay. Our goal for back exercises like that is to work on the posture. You want to open up your chest, round the shoulders back. So just the upper back will do, just this way. You have arms extended out. And then think about squeezing your shoulder blades to the gather in the middle. Yeah. This way, just here will do. This is actually a good angle where your arms are slightly out instead of straight above your head. Uh, that straight above the head, it try it uh, tightens up your traps, which is not a good idea if you already have tight neck. So this is actually pretty good. All you have to think about is shoulder blades together, the two bones there. Yeah, squeeze, squeeze, and then squeeze. hold it there. So yeah, you can either hold it for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds uh, each time, or you do what, what you just did, uh, <laughs> the flying version, <laughs> the flapping version. Yeah, I like to call it flapping. It's Flappy literally, bird. yeah. So shoulder blades together and then relax. So that is for the Superman uh, hold. Mm -hmm. As long as you get the right muscles, the uh, point to take note is just relax your neck a little bit more. So keep your neck long the whole time for this movement. I think in this position, I'm, I'm really trying to see if I can focus on it, like extending this yeah, part correct. sort of like forward that way. Really lengthen the whole spine, even mm -hmm. though you're working on the back muscles, keep the spine long. Yeah, just the upper back muscles here will do. Try to relax the lower back, relax the lower body. That's fine, just the upper back. Very yeah. good. So that's another version to this, which is, uh, I called it a rocket man. Um, hold, mm -hmm. which is similar to Superman, but instead of uh, arms above, you're going to keep your arms by the side in 45 degrees this way. That's it. And this one, just make sure your palms are facing down. No, oh, no, fa that yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Like palms are facing down on the ground. So okay. that is the correct or uh, neutral position or where you want your shoulders to be, where mm -hmm. you uh, externally rotate the shoulders to open up the chest. This way, yeah. So all you have to do for this one, again, not the lower back. You want the upper back only. Round the shoulders back and then just squeeze the shoulder blades to the middle. I actually prefer this exercise to the superman hold because this has lesser strain on the neck, the muscles around the neck. Because your arms are down. This also feels a lot more comfortable. Sort of, I think when anyone's in a superman position yeah. with your arms forward, you tend to hunch your shoulders up and then you don't get that length in your neck and it's a lot harder to try and bring your shoulders back down yeah. but here because you're thinking of sending your arms down and that sort of almost helps lift you up a little bit more yeah without correct straining your back and for both of these versions the focus is shoulder blades together so you want to connect those shoulder blades together uh, this one if you can for those, some of you who have that uh, range of motion thumbs pointing up to the ceiling yeah so that is really round Ooh. the shoulders back and work on the tiny little muscles right behind your shoulders. You know this is really weird. I can I can feel it like yeah, right in the middle inside. Too. Like that's insane. Like rhomboids. That is the right R spot rhomboids? that we want to work on. Rhomboids, yeah. right? Rhomboids, correct. Yeah. yeah, that part and those those muscles right in the middle along your spine. That's the one that uh, actually keeps you standing, sitting upright, standing upright, looking good. Yeah, that's it. That's so how many of these should people be doing? So what you're doing right now, the pulses, I like to go for um, 30 pulses, which is actually That's quite a lot. Yeah, wow. you will definitely, at first, the first five reps or 10 reps, mm -hmm. you probably won't feel uh, much. Or some of you haven't done any back exercise before, you're going to feel it on the first 10. Sure. And then when you really push on to 30 uh, or 20 to 30 reps, you will definitely get your muscles working a lot. Okay, now a lot of people when they think of doing, I'm just going to come up for a second, yep. when they think of doing um, back exercises, a lot of people think that you, you need weights. I get, this, I get this is a good way to do it. But what's the importance of training your back? So it's actually a very important part of um, your everyday. It's a more of a countering your everyday uh, lifestyle where you sit, you stand, you walk, you cycle, you climb upstairs. It's mostly on the front part of the body. That's the main muscle group that's working every day, anything that you're doing. 
and the only time you ever actually use your back muscles to tighten up, to straighten up, is, I don't know, when you are going to the gym. If you do go to the gym and use the weights and those back uh, exercise machines, then that's when you use it. Otherwise, a lot of people just don't use it, and that's why you see a lot of people just uh, mo Slouch yeah, that's the most common slouching. Right. Yeah, and over the years, I'm pretty sure you have seen um, some senior citizens walking around with really, really poor posture. Just like that is from yeah, accumulated over the years of not touching the back muscles at all. So this is very important um, in terms of your overall health. Okay. Yeah. So can we talk a little bit about the shoulder blades then? Because I feel like a lot of people mistake some of the exercises and then end up, and if I turn around, sort of like with winging shoulder blades, you know, that, yeah. that bit where yeah. it sort of like starts to wing out like this. So they, they're trying to bring their shoulders back, but then they end up with it winging. So how, yes. how can we prevent that from happening? Because so, that's not great. Yeah, yeah, I have that problem too. So my right shoulder blade wings out slightly more than my left and I started doing a lot of back exercises because I want to correct the, the difference in angle. And then I realized that the Superman and Rocketman holes or pulses, they work really well in correcting. It's almost like a rehab exercise. Yeah, so those are uh, those two little exercises that looks really small and not heavy weight. Doesn't look ah, oh, it's not cool. It's just yeah, you're just laying down. You're at the gym at a corner. Uh, it's actually very important to to work on them. Those are the exercises that you know brings your shoulder blades flat down. Yeah. And once we've mastered these techniques and once we've gotten our shoulder blades into the right alignment and have built up a little bit of that strength, what's the progression then? What can we do then? Are there any aids or tools that we can use to then improve and, and strengthen our back even more? Yeah, so if we're talking about the same two exercises that we touched on, uh, you can make it harder or work your muscles a little bit more by using tiny dumbbells, like really mm -hmm. tiny, 0 0.5 kg or 1 kg, you're going to feel a lot of difference. So I guess you could even use water bottles yeah. or anything like yeah. that, right? Yeah, water bottles, yeah, perfect. Yeah, those are perfect. If you have that, those at home, definitely, mm -hmm. um, but you need to have two. Uh, symmetrical ones. So, so, that yeah. you don't, so that you don't so end up with... So it's not one heavier. And, yeah. Fair so enough. So that's good enough. Incredible. Well, yeah. there you go. You've got another way for you to be working out your body from the comfort of your own home. Hopefully, we've been able to break it down enough for you to be able to ensure that you are doing these movements correctly when you are training at home via any home-based workout or if you've been following our workouts here on Get Active TV. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you. We'll see you again on Break It Down. Fah. Talk about that muscle engagement. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're going to come out of this a lot more not just fit, but body aware. Oh no, Because everyone's sure. got to take care of it a lot more, right? Completely, I completely agree. And I think just all these little micro movements that we're working on are definitely going to be helping you at home and beyond out of Circuit Breaker. Okay, so we've still got a whole suite of things coming your way. If you haven't done so already, please make sure that you are sharing our stream, commenting on the stream as well, and telling us what you have learned during this Circuit Breaker about yourself in order to walk away with a particular free meal Subway from Subway. Subway meal. Oh, I don't know, fresh. what's your favourite thing from Subway? Subway? Subway melt, double meat, double cheese Ooh. on Parmesan Oregano. I like it in the wrap. I feel less guilty if I have it in a wrap. I don't care. <laughs> um, Give me those carbs. <laughs> like Kelly said, we've got lots more stuff coming your way. I think this afternoon, the lean, mean machines from House, Athle House Athletics. I always get that one wrong. House Athletics will be coming in at 3 p.m. to bring you through a solid sweat session. Uh, we've also got Watch You Cooking at 4 p.m. with Ben Logan. That is absolutely correct. Remember earlier on when we had Shrek in, I was telling you about the promo that we're going to have with Under Armour next week. That is something to look forward to. When I talk about a huge discount, I'm talking about almost 50% off. I'm talking 40% discount, guys, coming your way, but it'll only be for a very specific few hours on Thursday. We will share that code with you when it all happens uh, next <laughs> Thursday, but but trust me, Not gonna I'm going to be right on it straight away. Tomorrow, we've got loads coming your way as yeah. well. We've got Sarah Lynn coming in to help you with a little bit of gyrotonic. Getting, getting, getting that nice. flow in. Mm -hmm. It's Family Friday, so we're bringing in all the mums, all the family-oriented stuff. Mm -hmm. Claire Jedrick teaching us a little bit about messy play. Unfortunately, the kids won't be with her, which is so sad because Ollie and Charlie are so cute. Very, if very cute. If you've seen her Instagram, you'll see how chubby Charlie is. And who else do we have? 
Uh, we've also got It's, uh, well, you know her Instagram handle as It's Haniri, but a lot of us know her as Daphne Koo. She used to be on Singapore Idol. Oh, exciting, so, exciting. Bow, bow, bow. We've got lots of stuff coming your way. So many freebies. Again, today you get that free Subway meal. As long as you like, share the morning show and tell us what is the one thing that you've learned about yourself during this circuit breaker period but that's it for today make sure you join us again tomorrow 10 a.m for the morning show with kelly and barbara remember guys whatever you're doing stay safe stay strong and stay, stay at, at home, home.